Jeremy, I think I owe you this video. So check this out. I have your model up. I've opened it up and I'm going to do a little bit of work to fix some stuff and show you how to give this sucker some depth. So you have a lot of funky polygons. So this is how I would go about beginning to clean some of that up. All right, so I've you had everything in orthographic views, which is crazy. I like to have these in my, you know, in my standard view. So like this is the left, this is the front, this is the top. Makes it a little bit easier to see exactly where I'm at. And then this I'll have in my perspective. Sorry. These were in or these are now in orthographic views. You had them in perspective views, but not a big deal. Everybody works differently. Now, in terms of your actual model, let's check that out. Um, I'm going to switch this to my hidden line view. I like being able to see my actual edges. So this is not bad. And then you can turn on like a wireframe override. But personally, I tend to work this way best so what i was saying was when you get in here or let me see if you do this and then come in here you can kind of see what you're working with but i'm going to go back to hidden line so check this out what i'm saying is see right here right in here this is a great example so this is a one two three four five, six, seven, eight sided <laughs> polygon, which is madness. Now check this out. There's a bunch of different ways we could clean this up. But one of the ways I would probably approach this would be to simply simplify this. All right. You can still keep this. I would literally end up taking it so that this where all this stuff comes to a point, I would literally have it down down here. So what I'm saying is do this. I'm going to start at the vertex level and I'm going to do just a little bit of work. What am I looking for? What am I looking for? Ah, actually, I was passing it target weld. So I'm going to turn on target weld and I'm going to do just a little bit of work. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Now, Look at this, one, two, three, four, five-sided polygon. If I do this, suddenly this is a four-sided polygon. Now I can continue to work to clean things up a little bit. Actually, let me not do that. I want to take this, I'm gonna turn on target weld, and if you're target welding, it's saying weld this to that. See, so it welds it over there. I'm then gonna do this to this because this was also kind of jacked up now this is a four-sided in fact let me undo that because if I were to do this and then also this check it out now I have a one two three four right here I have a one two three looks like a four and then let me see what's up with that Looks like this might be doing something a little scary and hairy. But I still have this kind of a nice smile where this is coming down in there. And I now have four-sided. One, two, three, four-sided. One, two, three, four-sided. See? And then, like, right in here. See, this is a one, two, three, four, five-sided polygon. But the shape is actually four-sided. So... It's little things like that that you can go in and clean up and still pretty much maintain what you had there. And, I mean, if we're being completely honest, you could probably eliminate this, this little funkiness in here, because, like, this is like one, two, three, four, five, six-sided. So you could maintain kind of the shape you have right here, if we did like one, two, three, four, all right? But if you want to keep what you got here, that's pretty good because this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I would maybe do a little bit of work in here cleaning this up. But you see what I'm going for? You can pretty much keep most of what you got. It's just going to be spots like this where you have one, two, 
three, four, five points. So, you know, well, this to this, like this, and you still have a four-sided polygon. Now, up in here, this is madness. This would really take some work to kind of figure out where we're going to take this. So if you really wanted to, you could add like an extra split in there. But that's the, I'm going to let you work on figuring some of that. And, and as I said, honestly, with this, I might even let it go and just let you keep it. But I'm just saying, spots in here where you could clean something up without murdering yourself in terms of time and effort, I might actually go ahead and do so. Now, having done that, there's something else I wanted to show you real quick. I'm going to go back to default shading so you can see this. And one of the things that I think is missing is this needs to be, you know, nice and solid. It needs to have an inside, and there's a very, very easy way to do that. The other thing I think think I had suggested was you know you could come in here I would you know maybe select like all the way out here and separate that so then you have a top you know like a spot where somebody had maybe come in and gone ahead and oh hold on let me switch to my selection tool so I'm not inadvertently moving stuff all right, now to do what I just did, I selected this and then I'm going to hold shift and double click and it shifts all the way around. See, so I can do that again. Oh, no. Nope. Oh, there we go. And I'm actually switching between shift and control right there. So I'm using control to select this first one and then shift, control, and then I'm holding the shift. Oh, nope, didn't mean to do that. All right. You see how I'm just kind of working my way in a little bit until I have all this selected. So I'm just saying, all right, cool. All oh, hold on, I'm not sure why it did that. It also depends upon where you go to select it. All right. So I'm just working my way all the way in. like the last one it's not going to help me out that's fine so i can just go through and do this oh there we go and i'm just going to work my way around making sure i have all of these selected I'm just using the scroll key or the scroll wheel on my mouse to scroll in and out. So now I've got all that selected. I can come down here and I am looking for the 
uh, detach tool. So I'm going to hit detach. I'm going to make it its own object. I can call it top because that's <laughs> pretty simple. I'm going to hit OK. And now it sees this as a whole separate object. I did not mean to detach that face. I'm going to leave it because that's, I mean, you know, you can be very, very careful with that later on. But now I have that and I have that as two separate objects. So check this out. I'm going to select this. And let me go back to it being default shading just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. All right, cool. So I got this. I'm going to come in here and I am actually going to go down to the shell modifier if I can learn how to spell again. And just that quickly, I've given it some thickness. I can tell it, you know, how thick or thin I want it to be. I wouldn't take it too far, but just a little bit of thickness I think is good. Um, segments is really going to come down to you know, just how many segments I want to make up the actual thing. So 45, way too high. Um, honestly, for what you're doing, I would probably go one, maybe two, but that's pretty much it. So right there, now your object has some thickness all right and the same thing can be done to the top and then worse you can take the top and you could move it up a little bit you could even rotate it just a touch just so you know it looks like oh yeah it's was put back but it wasn't put back right so it's sitting you know a little little funky all right so that is what I would be doing if I were you in reference to your, your object, my next steps would be. So hope that helps.